Hey, how's it going today? I'm going to show you how to do this really cool, neat trick with some procedural growth where you can grow things along the surface of any 3D object using thinking particles. Now, R21 showed this off in their demo, uh, and I saw that little sphere with stuff growing on it, and I said, man, I've got to figure out how to do that. I did. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that yourselves. It's actually very easy in a very simple workflow. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so let's get into it. So we're going to add a sphere to our scene. We're going to go ahead and open the 64, if I can type. There we go. And we can turn on our little guard. How do you say that? Garard. Anyway, we're going to turn on our lines so we can see those. And so we're going to add a volume object, volume builder, here by clicking this button. We're going to go to sphere. We're going to drop that in there. We're going to go to volume builder. We're going to change that to vector. We're going to lower this down to two. We are going to grab our sphere. We're going to clone that by holding control and dragging it out. And now we need to go to simulate particles, thinking particles, TP geometry. Okay, then we're going to go over here. Hold down the cloner button here and go over to the matrix. Now I know what you're thinking. What is the matrix? No. So we've gone into the matrix here. And we're going to set this to object. And under the object, we're going to grab the sphere we created. Drop it down there. And you can already see we've got some little points on it. We've got a distribution set to surface. And that's exactly what we want. So we're going to crank this up to like... Pfft, I don't know, 200, okay? So now I've got these little dots everywhere. So we don't want to just create matrices only. We want to generate thinking particles. So we're going to change that to thinking particles. Now it's given us this option of this TP group. Now that's not toilet paper group, that's thinking particles group. And we're going to go up here and we're going to go to thinking particles and we're going to go to TP settings, okay? We want two ply and we want soft. I already made a toilet paper joke. I don't know why I did it again, I'm sorry. Okay, town portal, Diablo two players, Diablo one, anyone? Diablo three, I guess. TPs weren't as big of a deal in Diablo 3. Anyway, here we are. We're going to grab this particle group little tab here, drag it in over here under TP group. Okay. So then we're going to go up here and we're going to hold this down and we're going to create a null. And now we're getting weird. Okay. We're going to right click this. We're going to go to animation. And then we're going to ignore that because that's not where we're going to go. We're going to go down to programming tags and we're going to go to espresso. Now, underneath Espresso, you're like, I don't ever use Espresso. I don't want to do scripts or codes. Me either. But this is cool. Under Thinking Particles, and very stupid easy, there's a P pass, right? Which I guess means particle pass. I don't know. But you're going to grab that under the TP initiator. P pass is here. And then under TP dynamic, is going to be P force object. Okay? P force. We're going to grab this, and we're going to connect that. Now, here's the neat bit. Under simulate, we're going to add a force, a field force. And all we have to do is grab this field force, drag it in to our p-force object. There we go. Okay. So now, if we go to our... Yep. So now, with our field force, we're going to go to set absolute value to about 50. We're going to grab our volume builder, and we're going to put it in here. So I drag and drop the volume builder into our field force and choose volume object. Okay. So now what we need to do next is create a tracer. So we've got our object here, cloner. We're going to go down to tracer. And the tracer, we don't want the field force. We're going to delete that. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to simulator, simulate. We're going to go to thinking particles, TP settings. Grab this all again. Grab it down in the trace link. Okay, so now we're going to want to add some randomness to this. So we're going to go to create field, random field. And inside of random field, we're going to drag that into our field force. That's fine to live underneath there. We're going to change this to absolute velocity to 500. We're going to get crazy signals here. So one thing we need to do is un inside of our volume builder, we're going to want to drag this into there as well. Okay. So now one more thing, we're going to create another field force, another random field. We're going to drag that into our volume builder. So now inside of our volume builder, we're going to select this random field. We're going to change this to cross. And we're going to make sure that this box is big enough to cover up our sphere. 
so if I change this to 200 by 200 by 200 it should yes now you can see it's almost encompassing our sphere but not quite so we actually want to just grab that and make that a little bigger and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna up this 300 300 okay so now it completely encompasses our sphere and that's really important that this box is is big enough to encompass your object so we're gonna turn that off in the preview because that's gonna slow things down like crazy and so now let's turn this off in the preview as well because that's just annoying to look at we hit play got all these squiggles squiggling around on top of the surface of our sphere Whew. crazy right so now we can do the exact same thing we did in the last one we can right click we can go to redshift tags we can go red we can misclick redshift tag object curves let's do strips we can do strips create new Material, redshift material, material. Throw a material on the sphere. Select a different material. Just make a gold. Okay, we'll put gold on the tracer. So I hit, hit play. Got all these crazy squiggles. Redshift, render view, play. Look at that. That looks weird. <laughs> let's go and make sure this is set to redshift let's go to lights let's add an area light perfect Above that make that much bigger here we go set that to about five yeah Let's go back to this material and let's make this black and not so shiny. So yeah, there you go. And now we can change this to whatever we want, capsules if we want. So let's go ahead and increase this to like 250. And let's go back to hidden lines just because I like to see the squiggles so now you can see our squiggles are a little cleaner a little more wibbly wobbly that's what we like to see and so now we can affect our field force one as well we can do a different seed we can go about 150 it almost looks like uh, a map of the world a little bit Oh, my computer crashed. So that was fun. Okay, so I've kind of reconstructed it back basically where we were. Uh, I've hit play here. We see we all these fun lines, and we've got some flying out, and that's kind of fun. And that's just really affected by the, the scale of your, your random field here. And we can change different field times. We can change different seeds. So that one's going to give us more of a, wow, that looks like a turtle shell. <laughs> That's wild. That's kind of fun. Uh, we can do all kinds of noises. Let's see. Let's do displaced turbulence. What's that going to do? Oh, erase those little lines. There we go. Look at that. That's so neat. So neat. So now we can do the same thing with this bridge shift object tag if we want to do that. Or we can do a sweep again. So once again, we can do a circle. Make this circle very small, about a two. Uh, then we go to here, go down to sweep, go tracer, put the circle underneath the tracer. Back that up play realize you did it backwards once again put the circle above the tracer now hit play 
Very cool. Let's change that sweep to have a cap. Uh, I got a 0.5 cap. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll also make it just a little smaller in the beginning. Or the tracer. Nope, under the sweep. Yeah. So we'll bring this down so it starts starts small. Yeah. There we go. So there. Now we've got this cool thing and you can literally put that in any geometry as long as you make your random field as long as it's inside your volume builder and your random field encompasses your entire thing so there you go so you see if you play it back with with the sweep and stuff it's a lot slower oh, let's take that out cause we just want it to go fast so we're gonna go with a red shift tag here because that's always good we're gonna go with capsules again We'll shrink that down. And we can actually do a cool little, like maybe we can do like a hump in the middle. So it's like fat and then thin again. And so let render. Do -do -do. Redshift. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So it's only like fat in the beginning and. It kind of looks like a little topographic globe. It's really neat, really cool little abstract planets if you want. You know, that'd be a really neat way to, to do that and just kind of have this really procedural planet growth. But uh, we'll throw a material on there. We'll throw a material on our sphere as well. We'll make a different one we'll just so we can see the difference. Make this white rough. Redshift light, dome light. We use a Grisco Gorilla Dome Light from back in the day. Okay, Redshift Render. That's neat. That's neat. So here you can see. With Redshift, we've got the, the curves on. That's kind of a really neat effect. But one weird thing that happens is if you try to render this out in anything besides the preview here, like if I hit the render button here, or if I go through the settings over here and I go through the render panel, it disappears. Which is really stupid, and I can't quite figure out why. I tried making it a particle uh, versus a, a normal tag, you know. I just can't get it to actually work, so I have to use this uh, to get my render settings. And you can use bucket render inside of this, and that's fine to get a still frame, but an animation would not be possible. So, obviously, the thing I did to kind of get the animation done is uh, I built a sweep. So, kind of lame, but you had to build that sweep uh, and create that. But not the end of the world, just uh, if you know why that's not rendering out. That would be pretty awesome to write that in the comments below, and I'll I'll fix that and add that in there. But yeah, okay. So one last thing. Oh my gosh. Switch this back to Perlin. I like the way that's swirling. Let's change that back to Perlin. There we go. That's nice. We're going to go into our circle here. I'm going to lower this one. I'm going to go to my sweep. I'm going to bring the start scale of it down a bit. We're going to add a cap, about a 0.5 cap on the end of that. There we go. So we're going to let that swirl. See, it's a lot slower when you can't use Redshift to do it, but this way we will be able to anim uh, render out the whole animation. And you get the visual of it in the viewport while you're going, so there are benefits to it. 
Okay, so I let it play through and I kind of rotated around it a little bit here and found an area I like the way this looks. And we're just going to texture this real quick within Redshift. I'm going to make sure we're in the Redshift render here. I'm going to go ahead and set this to film 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. And I uh, also actually into real quick, I want to go to Redshift. I want to go to GI. I want to say Brute Force and Brute Force. I'll say about four. We don't really have a lot going on in here, but we're going to go one. Uh, we'll go 256. 256. Okay. So now we're going to build a psych real quick. So I always like to have little psychs. So let's just bring this down underneath that. Grow this. Grow that. Okay. We're going to hit C to make that editable. I'm going to go ahead and change it to these lines just so we can see what's going on here. We're going to hold this. Double click that. Hold control and drag that up a little bit. Drag it up. We're going to try to keep it about the same length. It's not super important. Mainly in that curve there though. Okay, we're going to bring that up, bring that up, bring that up. Okay. There we go. We're going to grab this and we're going to hold Alt. Click the subdivide. So there we go. We've got a nice psych wall. We can just stretch out with T now. There we go. Nice little psych wall. It's just always nice to have that for a, a backdrop if you want. And if you need to rotate it to, to match your scene, just rotate it around. So there you go. Apply your materials and your lighting and render it out with whatever you want. And that's how you do it. It's pretty easy. You just make sure that you put your 3D object inside of the random field inside your volume builder. Make sure that box is big enough to encompass your object. And that's going to be key. All right. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We've got new tutorials coming out very soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.